So for our listeners who may not know you yet, could you tell us a bit about yourself and your art, please? Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you already mentioned, my name's Catherine. I started kind of my quote unquote journey in art uh, at Queen's University. I uh, started in the fine art program um, right out of high school and I wasn't really sure what I was doing at the time. I was just trying to choose a degree that I had some interest in and I was, um, you know, needing to go to college. So I was like, okay, art sounds good. This is a good school. I'll try this for a little bit. And it really wasn't until I went through the whole program, which included printmaking, sculpture and painting all the way through my fourth year that I really fell in love with painting specifically. Um, but it really wasn't that obvious to me for that whole time. Um, until that fourth year when we had independent studio practices and it was really about building out a body of work the same way that you would if you were a practicing artist in the real world. So in that fourth year, I became really engaged in painting and I was like, wow, I really don't want this to stop after I graduate. How do I, how do I keep this going? Right. So I decided to extend my degree by six months and I went to I went to Australia and just took electives in painting, um, and that was really amazing because I was removed from my comfort zone, and from kind of all social and familial pressure where I was from, going to a new place where you don't know anybody and all you have to do is paint. Um, I really found out a lot about myself and what I was interested in. So I spent six months in Australia doing that and sort of preparing a portfolio for a grad program. Um, so when I got back from Australia, I went to Toronto and I worked and I got different internships at different companies just to stay afloat. I, I was a waitress. I was a bartender. I was just trying to save as much money as I could because I knew that school was a huge uh, financial endeavor. And what I was trying to do was pretty risky to go and paint. So I spent a year doing that and applying to different grad schools. Um, I was accepted at San Francisco Art Institute, and I was really lucky to receive the presidential fellowship when I went there, uh, which was hugely helpful in covering that. So, um, so I was in San Francisco for two years building out my work, and that was really transformative for me because at Queens, we were sort of and Emily, you may have a different opinion than I do because you were a student there with me as well. But I felt like we were very classically trained and we were very um, traditionally focused and in painting. You know, it was about oil painting and it was about the figure and it was about the landscape. Even when it was contemporary landscape, it was still very traditional. Yes. Um, and so moving to San Francisco, uh, <laughs> maybe the most liberal off the wall place in the universe uh, was really revolutionary for me because my work needed to catch up to what was happening in San Francisco culturally and socially. Mm -hmm. um, so I really broke out of my traditional figurative work and started moving slowly more abstractly throughout those two years. So now my work is a hugely far departure from where I started at Queens, which, <laughs> like I said, was really traditional, heavy oil painting, figurative, realistic. Um, now my work is mixed media. I use spray paint, acrylic, um, oil, pastel, pretty much whatever I can get my hands on. And um, they're very abstracted works. Um, yeah, here I am. Uh, not to go on for too long, but I got to Charlotte kind of on a whim. I graduated. Uh, from San Francisco, and as all as as all everyone knows, the Bay Area prices are very intense. Mm -hmm. um, so, as an emerging artist, I just needed some time to build myself up and to be able to build out my work without the pressure of five thousand dollars a month and rent prices between the living situation and the studio. So crazy, uh, and that would be at the bottom. I mean, like I lived in one of the toughest areas in the city and it was still really expensive and then getting a studio you'd have to you know probably go to Oakland or something like that so it was just very overwhelming to take that on as a just as a graduate uh as a new graduate and also uh it sounds kind of silly to say but as an immigrant as a Canadian living in the U.S. you don't have the same opportunities For sure. you are 
are fighting for says um you you're you're fighting for work that they can line up with what you can apply to um there's a lot in that so so i needed some time to build myself up i moved to charlotte because um my boyfriend who's now my fiance was coming out here for work and he was like would you would you consider this place uh, all my California friends were like, are you kidding me? Like, you're going to leave California and go to North Carolina? Like, that's so lame. And I knew that what it was going to be for me was just a period of time to get an affordable studio where I could make big work, where I could take risks, where I could meet new people and kind of start my career with some confidence. So <laughs> that's what I've been doing for the past two and a half years in Charlotte. And it's been amazing. Thanks so much for sharing your journey. It sounds like a really like eventful one and we'll love yeah. to hear more about it um, in a bit later on. And so like after all of this, I know that you've recently had a show at the Mint Museum, which is really amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. How was that experience? Thank you. It was, it was amazing. I mean, I, so I found out about uh, the Mint last July, so July, 2019. The curator emailed me personally and said, hey, Catherine, um, you know, I'm doing this series of shows at the beginning of 2020 with emerging artists, and I want you to be the first one. Are you interested? And I was like, wow. Yeah. You know, like a curator of a museum emails you and asks if you're interested, you're interested. So um, so that was incredible. I I worked very closely with her from July to December. Uh, I had her for regular studio visits because I really wanted to make sure that I was showing a full breadth of my work, but also my best work. Um, that show has pieces from 2017. It has pieces from 2018, 2019, and 2020. Um, there are 11 paintings in the show, and they're installed on the first, second, and third floor um, uh, atrium hallways of the museum. Um, and I kind of organized it so that people could see the different styles that I'm working through and how my work has evolved over the years, um, which I, I've already said, it's been a big change from realistic to full abstract to no paint at all. I like messed around with a lot of different things. So, so the mint was really, really cool. Yeah. Like, did you show kind of your transition? I did. So, um, so the show opened in February. Um, and it's actually been extended till August, which is nice because of this whole situation. Uh, I was lucky enough to have my opening reception in February, which was, I mean, thank, thank goodness. That, that was just a really nice opportunity for people in the community who hadn't met me yet. I'm still quite new to Charlotte. I've only been here for two years. And so for people to be like, who is this person? Why do we care about her? Why is she in our museum? And for them to come through and meet me was was really personal and, and, and lovely. Um, but yes, to answer your question, you know, I was showing work from the beginning of San Francisco through all the way to work that I finished two weeks before the opening, you know? So some of the paint was just drying and some of it, you know, was like, like way in the past. But in doing that, because I had the opportunity to show so many works and because they were separated in the exhibition and let people kind of walk through my mind, you know, like they were kind of seeing like, okay, wow, this came from this and this is a little connected there. And okay, as I'm going through the, the, the floors of the museum and as I'm going through this, I can kind of see where her mindset is, which is, which was really awesome opportunity to kind of show people all a, like a bigger range of your work. And, and not that these are just maybe like one hit wonders over here or the single idea, but really where things are coming out of over three years. That's incredible. Like I can only imagine like how big your body of work is actually. And <laughs> I wish that I could go and see it. So it's open until August. And when yep. is the like physical museum open? Great question. I mean, we're in phase, so phase two in, in North Carolina, which for us is the opening of restaurants, um, hair, all that good stuff is Friday. So I don't know when institutions like that will open just because there's so high traffic. Um, it's all like a museum in this case is also a, a nonprofit institution. So they, I, I mean, I don't know how they're going to tackle it internally. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they're going to respond to the recommendations of the state. I'm just not really sure. So 
I'm thinking maybe we'll be open in July and we'll get maybe a few weeks before it closes up, which would be cool. But honestly, I'm grateful for it happening. And I think that a lot of artists can relate to this, that for me, the most important thing in the show or the three most important things in having a show like that is one, making the work, right? You get to make the work. You have a purpose making the work. You, you have a reason. You can really flush out your ideas. You have a deadline. You got to get it done. So that's the first amazing thing about having a show. The second thing that's amazing about having a show is getting people actually in front of your work. Uh, I'm in this warehouse in the middle of Charlotte. People aren't just like waltzing in and taking a look at the paintings all the time. It's always through the phone. So getting people to actually show up and see the work at that opening reception and just celebrating with you and having fun with you and for people to have that honest connection, not only with the artist, but with the work, um, in a really low stress way. I mean, going to an opening, I'm sure you know, it's kind of just like going to be, it's not, it's not very stressful. You know, you're kind of just like, Oh, I'll look at this stuff over here. I'm going to talk to this person over there. Um, so that's the second part. And then the third component is really getting those documentation of your work so that you can continue to share that installation, um, in the future for years. Um, so my photographer, Kyo Nam, who's um, Korean photographer based in Charlotte, Korean American. I die for him. He's the best. He just like has been working with me. He worked with me for my solo show at the, at the new gallery in December that ran through uh, November, December, and January. And then he's worked with me to photograph this exhibition. And I think having someone who really understands how to document your work and what your vision is for those photographs is also really important. It's not just like, okay, like it happened, an iPhone picture. Like, no, you have to really work with your photographer to make the work shine and make the work feel like the work more than just, I don't know, you know, little, like a snap sure, picture like capture, or a video. Actually, like, capture the work. and Yeah, and it's really challenging. <laughs> it's really tough. Most times, like, the photo doesn't do the painting justice at all. So finding totally. the right photographer is so crucial. It's so crucial. And it's been really fun for me to work with him because he didn't specialize at all in painting artwork. I was the first artist he ever shot for. He put, he mostly shot lifestyle and food. And I was connected to him through my gallerist, uh, Irina Toshkova. And she, she was like, oh, Kyo will be great. And he was just so patient with me. And he was really so sweet that when we were documenting the works, he like let me into his space as the photographer to kind of direct what I really wanted. And then he uses his expertise to elevate that. So it's a, for me, I think working with your photographer is like a whole other stage of the process that really you need to think seriously about as an artist and collaborate with your photographer, because those images are the only things that exist after, especially if you sell the work, like it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to have that work because that's going to be the thing that gets you the next show. And that's going to be the thing that gets you the next connection. For sure. And I'm so glad that you guys found each other. And yeah. so for this, uh, I guess we'll keep updated with when the Mint Museum opens. Yeah. I wonder too, like after it does open, if just for a month or two, or I mean, hopefully earlier than later, but do you plan to maybe make like a virtual um, kind of showing so that people don't have to travel there to see it or do you have any ideas on that? That's really a good question. I hadn't really flushed that out yet. I think probably because it's closed and I'm kind of working on their direction but mm -hmm. I think that's a really good idea. I'll have to think about that more and what that would look like um, but I think there is, is an opportunity for video and if I could get into the museum I think video would be the way that I would want to do it um, because especially my work is really large and the works that are in the museum are quite large. Um, five, five of them are eight by six feet. So these are really large paintings and it's challenging to feel the impact of standing in front of a work that's larger than you without that actual experience. But I think that maybe video could, could work. I'm not, I'm not sure. And, and I, but that's a really good idea. I think if I could get in the museum, that would be really cool for me to do a walkthrough with people and talk to things personally and explain the process with the work installed and with a little bit of distance from it in the sense that I feel for me as an artist, when I'm making the work, I, everything's happening in my mind and everything's happening in my body, but I don't, I haven't, 
necessarily process it enough to talk about it. It's like, you know, when you're figuring out a something in your life and you wake up in the middle of the night and you have the answer, like you need that time after making the work to process like, what, the, what was I thinking about? Like, why did this happen? Like, what, how does this connect to the other thing? And it takes a long time for me to really like understand my work. So I think even having this period where like, yeah, maybe I'll do a tour and in August or late July, that'll have given me enough time to kind of process everything. Because like I said, some of the works I had finished like two weeks before the show opened. <laughs> like, they were like hot off the press, you know, like here it is people like. <laughs> sure. And you haven't seen it since. So like the no. photos would be really good for, I mean, if it's video or like when we see like photos of your work, people don't really understand the scale of it for sure. Yeah. And there's yeah. not that same coherence if you're just sliding through image after image, like experience yeah. it that way. But if it was a video walkthrough, that would be a totally different experience and closer to like, or as close to as actually visiting. Yeah, totally. I mean, I'm like brainstorming with you right now. I'm like, that's a good idea. Why haven't I thought about that? Like, <laughs> yeah, but that's like super interesting. I'm really excited to hear like what you end up doing. Thanks so much for tuning in. We would love to hear your thoughts or questions. Please let us know in the comments and review section, and we'll try to cover it in the next sessions. If you enjoy this content, please share and subscribe for more episodes. For latest updates, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Art Focus Exchanges.